Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial series for Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1 with the Making History DLC. Uh, for this tutorial series I'm going to make sure that the videos are titled very clearly about what they contain so that you don't have to go through all of the videos sequentially unless you really want to know everything. Um, you can just go to the video that contains the information that you're looking for. For instance if you're interested in docking you can just watch the docking video and stuff like that. Uh, this video will contain information about the game modes and the relevant settings and I'm not going to go into the mission builder just yet that'll be a separate video and uh, it's mostly stock right now except for scatterer environmental visual enhancements and stock visual enhancements those are the mods that give us the visuals the clouds that you see here and I just can't play Kerbal Space Program without clouds so that's the only exception to the stockishness Otherwise, I will be covering mods later on, maybe in parallel as well. Uh, we'll see, there are a lot of mods after all. So, uh, we are going to go to start game. I get Actually, let's uh, briefly go into these settings here, so that you understand what we've got. A show vessel labels I always have on. Show space center crew I almost always turn off. These are little kerbals that are running around in the VAB and SPH. Uh, previously, they've tended to create lag, and so I keep that off. Um, I don't know if they've reduced the lag of the little kerbals, but by the time you're making a thousand part vessels, probably you're going to want those off. Maybe, maybe you can turn them on initially just so that you get a little bit of a flavor. And then just remember that that's something that you can turn off to reduce lag in the VAB. Uh, display Earth time. If you're more comfortable with 24 hour days and 365 day years, you can turn that on. But Kerbin itself, you're not going to be starting in the real solar system. You're starting on a planet called Kerbin, and Kerbin has a six hour day, and its year, I think, is closer to 400 days than uh, 365. I forget the exact number, but um, we'll get to that. So, the, the system that you're going to be in is not our real solar system, and it has its own time frame. I would almost always suggest that you turn that off unless you're playing with a mod called real solar system which would change the planet to earth and then it would have a 24 hour day and 365 day years so anyway uh, co show contract uh, contract deadlines as dates that's up to you temperature gauges I have on thermal highlights I have on double click mouse look um, well that's something you're gonna have to get a feel for uh, EVAs rotate to the camera uh, that's something I have on uh, advanced streakables just have on, uh, so if you don't have that on, uh, that uh, allows for other options in the right-click context menu, and those are all helpful. Auto hide nav ball in map view. Turn that off. <laughs> turn that off, please. Uh, it's it's a good idea to turn that off. Uh, you want the nav ball up. There's no good reason why you don't want the nav ball up. If you don't have the nav ball up it prevents you from controlling your craft while you're in map view and that can cause all sorts of havoc. Curve net map aligns with orbit um, nothing much to say about that. Advanced message application just keep it on otherwise um, my settings are as you see here persistent debris okay so once you've launched a craft there are going to be pieces around because you're going to be letting go of stages you're going to be deploying things um, so this determines how much of that leftover stuff hangs out and right now I have it at 250 um, and this also determines how much leftover stuff is hanging out specifically at your space center and if you're getting a lot of lag at your space center you might want to make sure that that's on and you might want to reduce this if you're getting a lot of lag in your game as well so keep that in mind for now I've got at these settings um, yeah, I think uh, that just about says it all for that. So, if you want to uh, see my other settings, strain detail is high, scatter density is 50%, render quality, fantastic, texture quality, full res. I mean, without more visual mods than I have even right now, you're probably going to have a reasonable frame rate as long as you're not building something with hundreds of parts, hopefully. So, yeah, uh, but, you know, mess with those as you will. Actually, you know what, I, sh I probably should have that one.
Okay, so now when we click Start Game, we have Resume Saved if you already have a game. Start New, I'll go into in a sec. We've got Training, Scenarios, and then the Mission Builder stuff, which is new for the Making History DLC. I'll save this for later, especially since um, I'm new to it as well, and I think I need to spend more time with it before discussing it. Uh, the training missions are these, but hopefully uh, my videos will give you a better idea than these can as far as how to do stuff. So, yeah. But maybe they'll be helpful along the way as well. I, I'm not sure. I've never done them. So, scenarios. Mainly, I watch YouTube videos too. So, and I've, I've learned from that. And also just making my own mistakes. I recommend strongly just making your own mistakes. It's probably the quickest way to learn. And uh, Kerbal Space Program is nice, especially since we have a nice small planet called Kerbin that allows you to run the missions very quickly, as opposed to Earth, where the missions take a lot longer. Uh, you can get through all those mistakes nice and quick so that you learn and get on with it. So these scenarios are particular challenges, and again, I've never done these. So maybe they're interesting, but in the course of the regular game modes, you're probably going to be doing them anyway. So that's what I would recommend. Just do the regular game modes, and then you'll probably end up doing all of those scenarios and training missions anyway. So uh, the three regular game modes are Sandbox, uh, which gives you all the parts up front, which can be overwhelming because you don't really know what they're good for yet. And then you've got hundreds of parts to work with and they're just lying around. So maybe if, if I was just starting out, the one I like best is science here. Science, it gives you a few parts at the start and then you have to unlock the rest by doing science. And so you'll have your experiments and you'll run a little... Uh, I'll show you how to do all that. Um, we'll be doing stuff in career mode later on. And career mode uh, not only requires science to unlock parts, but your vessels are going to cost funds. And so that puts an extra burden. That makes it a lot more difficult to manage your space agency, of course, because if your vessels cost some money each time you launch, you have to watch that budget. And uh, yeah, so that's probably the most difficult of these three I'm not going to recommend that. Sandbox, in a way, is easy, but again, can be overwhelming because you get everything up front. It's the best way to test stuff because you don't have to worry about unlocking it. Maybe you have a particular idea. Uh, watching somebody else's videos or something like that, you see them build something and you want to build something like that. Or you want to build a replica of like an F-18, which you can do. You do that in Sandbox. But if you want to come to grips with the parts and really understand what they're all about, what they're good for, then science mode is probably where you want to do that. Uh, career mode is for an extra challenge. Okay, and you get to pick a flag. Uh, you can put your own flag in. You can name it, uh, just make sure there's no spaces, and you make it a PNG file, and you plop it into the game data folder, in the squad folder, and there's a flags folder. So in the squad folder, there's another folder called flags, and then it'll definitely show up here. Actually, anywhere in the game data folder, if you have a folder called flags, it'll probably show up here, but you might as well put it in the squad folder anyway. Uh, so, yeah, you can put your own flag in. Difficulty options. So, I've picked career mode, which has the widest range of options that are relevant. And um, maybe we'll compare modes. So, you see these career options here? Well, they're not going to be relevant to the science mode. And that's because science mode doesn't have the funding and doesn't require you to spend money for the launches. So, widest range of options is for career mode. Allow reverting flights. So, you've brought a rocket out to the launch pad and you decide there's something wrong with it. Well, th you can actually just recover vessel at that point because it's still on the launch pad. But, what if you launched? Well, if you've launched, then the only option you have to undo and go back to the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building, to fix things is to revert the flight. So, you can leave that on, but again, the point of career mode is an extra challenge. If you're in sandbox, totally revert flights. Um, if you're in science mode, that's up to you. In career mode, because you're looking for an extra challenge, you'll see that moderate gets rid of some of all these and hard un uh, undoes that. 
Frankly, even moderate should probably not allow reverting flights. You do have another option, actually, and that's if you were smart enough, if you will, to quick save. You quick save by pressing F5, and you can quick load the game by pressing F9. F9 will quickly load the previous F5 save, and so you can jump back to that point in time. You won't go back to the VAB in that case, but you can undo whatever mistake you just did. So you can allow quick loading. Missing crews respawn. Now you are going to be introduced to certain Kerbals, little characters, that will be the test subjects, if you will, of your space program. They, uh, they are cute, they are endearing, and the first four you get are going to be named Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Valentina. And uh, you may want them back, <laughs> to be frank. Uh, if, you, if you kill them, uh, you might want them to respawn. And so, that's that option. How long do they take to respawn if you kill them? You don't need to. You can get other Kerbals. There are plenty of other Kerbals in the, in the sea, on Kerbin, uh, that you can hire. And in fact, you can auto-hire those other Kerbals. But again, the Kerbals can be endearing sometimes, so maybe you just want to respawn them. Um, no entry purchase required. Oh, I should mention that uh, in career mode, it costs funds to hire Kerbals. So, missing crews respawn will make it easier. So it's not a trivial thing. Okay, uh, no entry purchase required on research. So, not only do you, uh, if you're doing it hard mode, um, or moderate, you're going to have to pay for the unlocking of parts even before you pay for the vessel. And I'll show you that uh, when we actually do career mode. So, this determines whether you have to pay to unlock parts or not. Indestructible facilities. Um, if you have a sufficiently large rocket or you crash a rocket into your buildings, you can destroy them. Um, this Enabling this will make sure that you can't destroy them. This is most helpful if you have insanely big rockets and uh, you keep wrecking your launch pad just from them launching. Uh, in which case you will have to constantly pay to rebuild your launch pad. So that's up to you. Include stock vessels. Well, uh, there are stock vessels that come with the program that you can take a look at. And if you've never played the program before, uh, you should probably take a look at the vessels that I came with. Those aren't the best vessels, okay? They all have something wrong with them, but they might give you an idea. So you can include stock vessels and take a look at them if you want. Allow other launch sites, that's new, and you might as well just have it. I, uh, I don't think there's a net benefit or drawback, so I don't think it's really going to make anything more difficult or easier. As far as re-entry heating, um, you can see that never changes with the game difficulty, so just keep it at 100% probably. Some people will probably say pump it up a bit to make it a little bit more difficult, of course. Resource abundance, um, you are going to be able to drill for fuel on other planets, okay? So this determines how easy that is. And uh, if it's 50%, you're going to have half the resources that you can drill for that somebody playing in normal mode would. So it depends on, you know, how hard you want that to be. And all of these things, I, I'll al almost always play a custom thing. If you want to know what I do, uh, probably, um, no, no, that, no, yes, that, uh, probably 50, enable, something like this. And now for career mode again, everything is dependent on, you're, you'll, to, in order to get funds, you have to get contracts, and in order to get contracts, you have to have a good reputation. A very good reputation you build up by successfully fulfilling missions. And so there's your starting reputation. Starting science, uh, it'll almost always, it should be at zero unless you want a head start or something. And starting funds, 25,000 is fine. Uh, if you want less, uh, hard mode sits at 10,000. So science rewards, again, this is very straightforward. What are the rewards for fulfilling the contracts? And so as you can see, hard mode sits at 60%, and penalties for failing the contracts, you can see there. And yeah, once we go into the career mode, 
you'll see how it all works out. So for now, I'll just set up my career mode. I'll say allow quick loading. I'll say indestructible facilities, allow launch sites, uh, this stuff. I'll set my starting funds at 10,000, um, that stuff. Uh, I'll just leave all this as is. So it'll be mostly hard mode. Okay, advanced. Enable Kerbal experience. Yes. I mean, so Kerbals have a little sort of level up system where they get more skills as they get more experience. So it's sort of like a mini RPG thing. And I prefer to have them level up immediately. I don't understand why they would have to. Uh, otherwise, they will have to come back to the space center in order to level up. And that's just cumbersome. I like my Kerbals to be out in space all the time. So, yeah. Level them up immediately. Allow negative science and funds. Um, yeah. Power pressure limits. Yes. Uh, that means that um, there are certain high pressure environments like Jewel. That's uh, Jupiter analog and Eve. That's the Venus analog, and not all parts are going to be able to survive those. Part G force limits self-explanatory though. If you, unless you don't know what a G force is, that's the limit of acceleration that something can take. And by the same token, Kerbals have their own limits. I'll keep that to one. Okay, and you can increase how much tolerance they have for G forces acceleration again. Uh, if you want to, but this should be more than sufficient. Resource transfer obeys cross feed rules. Probably just don't worry about that. Um, always a allow action groups. We'll talk about what action groups are. Uh, if you don't have that checked, then you'll have to unlock action groups by upgrading a building. This is really complicated. Career mode is rather complicated. That is why I suggest science mode. If you're in science mode, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about all of this. Um, there's a lot that you don't have to be concerned about in science mode. Oh, I didn't really discuss the enable comm network, which ties into all this stuff here. So, in order to control an uncrewed mission, no Kerbal on board, you will need to be able to maintain communication with that spacecraft if this is enabled. If this is not enabled, then you don't have to worry about communication. And the communication settings are here. Require signal for control. Well, if if you gotta enable the comm network, well, uh, there is another factor in that you need to be able to transmit science back home. So the comm network will help you transmit science back home. And maybe it's not just for requiring signal for control. So I guess it is not redundant. But uh, yeah, so sometimes you'll want to transmit science back home and that's important. Uh, require signal for control. Uh, plasma blackout means that when a pod is re-entering, you may lose communication as they do in real life. Uh, there's range modifier and stuff like that. I'll just leave those as is and enable the extra ground stations. Please do. That will help. Okay, so I'll go. I'll, I'll leave off always allow action groups even though I would like that. But I'll show you how to unlock that. So, okay, so those are our difficulty settings. Hopefully, that's clear. If there are any questions about those, uh, please do post them under the video. I'll leave this right now, and we're going to start a career mode. I'll just call it career. And I'll continue that in the next video. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.